All right, now that we have connected our um, number generator and then uh, fed the list length into it uh, to generate the amount of numbers and it's fully parametric, uh, we have the ability to change, let me get this selected here, um, we have the ability to change the number of subdivisions and uh, additionally the number of uh, numbers generated will also change. So just testing that out to make sure that it still works. Um, let's see, two and three, that's a good proportion. Um, the reverse vector plugged into that just to get it going the right way so that it intersected our massing. Okay, that's, that's very, very important because the intersection of the massing is how we're going to subtract. Right, so this part operates just like Rhino. Okay, oh, and by the way, I'm doing something very different now that I haven't shown you before, so that's why I'm not releasing you guys to do it or attempt to do it first, okay, because this is brand new. Um, so uh, we have our extrusion now, and the extrusion is made up of six separate B reps, and they have particular properties that you'll see can sometimes conflict. So what I'm going to do here is uh, subtract from one volume all of these volumes. So I'm going to go under uh, intersect and shape, and I'm going to use solid difference. And we've used solid difference before. before. That part's not new. Um, but what's going to happen is when we subtract the, um, the new geometry, from the original geometry, you'll see that sometimes there are some errors. Uh, so first, the first BREP set is going to be the geometry to subtract from. And so that's going to be my original box. And I want to give you guys a little tip here about control, because if I wanted to drag this line all the way across to that and then connect this, um, you have this weird wire that's kind of shooting all the way through. You have the ability to create wireless um, connections and label it. <clears throat> that's one option, but if you don't want to use wireless and you just want to pass a new wire in a different direction, you can pass it through using a param and then redirect it. It's kind of nifty, I think. So if you go to params, and you grab the generic geometry param, uh, you can plug box into it and it'll, it'll house the box geometry. And then you can kind of pull it down this way. Let me get this out of the way too. I'll put that up there. Um, you can kind of like pull it down like this so that you can plug it in and now you've got a wire that kind of routes a different way. Just in case you guys want to use that for cleanup or something like that, I want you to know that you can do it. So anyway, that's the original box, and so I'm going to plug in the list of my um, subtractions. So I, if I turn everything else off, you see my subtractions are taken out. However, you guys can't really see that very well, so hang on there. However, um, I noticed that it only subtracted a couple of them which is an error. And to be honest, I haven't quite fully identified exactly why, but what I notice is that it has something to do with the depth of um, the panels and its relationship to the ones next to them. Um, so I'm gonna turn this back on for a second. And what you see that these two um, at the end are not subtracted. And I think it has something to do with this corner I think, I think Grasshopper is just having trouble resolving that corner. I haven't quite found um, why specifically yet. So we have a bit of a workaround. It's not ideal, but it gets the job done. And this is another instance of you creating something that is a representational model. It won't be 100% correct, but it'll be close enough that you won't be able to see um, the super fine detail of what we're about to do. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. 
We are going to take the extrusion volumes and we're going to join them all together. And you would think that if you go to surface and, I'm sorry, transform, no, intersect and shape and you go to um, solid union, that it just takes all of these uh, volumes and connects them all together. So if I plug this in and I turn that off, what I get is a solid volume that I can plug in here. But it doesn't really compute it. So we have, um, we have one option that I know works and another one that I haven't tested yet that I'm going to try here with you tonight. Um, the first one is to scale the geometry so that they're not coincident at their edges. The other option is to um, merge all faces, and I forget what it's called here. Merge faces, yeah. Um, you can try merging all faces, and that might be able to do it as well. So if I, I'm going to try this one first and see if that works. So I'll turn this off. Let me just see it first. That looks like a pretty clean geometry. So let me plug that in and see if this one does it. It does not. Okay, good to know. All right. So um, since that one doesn't work, the, the workaround is to scale the geometry. So if you scale the geometry just by a factor of 1.01, .01, it makes it such a small margin larger that there are no coincident edges, and we can join it in a much cleaner way. So uh, let's go to transform and affine. We're going to grab scale. And this scale is going to be a lot easier. We need to scale every single one of these geometries, obviously. So I'm going to just put, put that there. You can see it's comparison to where it is there. Um, <clears throat> we're going to scale every single one of these individual extrusions from their center points which is found under surface and analysis, under area. So we're going to use uh, the centroid as our scale center point. And we're just going to put in a static factor of 1.01. .01. So what you'll see here is that the geometry ever so slightly overlaps. And if you need to do a detail model, this might not be the resolution for you. Um, but it helps to resolve that corner by overlapping the connections a little bit. Um, and so once those are scaled, you can use intersect and shape and solid union to connect them all together. So you'll notice here that that corner is a little different than what you saw before. And when you plug this one in, it's a cleaner cut. OK, so where's the error? The error is in the fact that um, these surfaces are no longer properly aligned in some cases. So you'll see here that there's a slight gap in between these two. But in the grand scheme of things, when you zoom out and you do a full on facade study, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. OK, so it's a, it's a little bit of a, a, a cheat, so to, so to say. Are there any questions about this? None. OK, so uh, go ahead and get caught up on that. And then um, I'll make sure that you're all caught up with this. And then that'll be it for tonight. Where did you get on the sub union? Uh, solid union. Oh. It's under intersect and shape. That's a new one, so I'll label it. <laughs>